Welcome to Up to the Minute. I'm Todd Duplantis. It is Monday. It is Monday, September the 28th. We are almost to October. Can you believe that? It's been more than six months since uh, most of us have been not been into the office at HCC. We're doing everything online these days. If you didn't know, we're going to talk more about that during this show. We've got some special guests from HCC here. But first, two co-hosts today. Of course, uh, Raquel Sims, who is out in Stafford, our Stafford correspondent. Good morning. Good morning, Raquel. Good morning. I hope everyone had a great weekend. Thank you for it having me. It was a here. good weekend, a little bit warm, but that front has come through this morning, and that's very exciting. Raquel, we're going to be back with you in just a little while with uh, the updates from Stafford. But first, Brittany Pacheco joins us from her home studio. Have you been outside yet this morning, Brittany? Hey, good morning, everyone. Yes, Todd, I have been out this morning. It's not the prettiest morning for a Monday, but then again, it is Monday, but it feels amazing. I took Luna out for her for her morning walk and I did not want to come back inside. You're lucky that I'm here. Uh, but while I am here, I just want to remind everyone to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram and YouTube. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell. And we also need your help to share this podcast. So all you need to do is click the share button the bottom of this broadcast so that you can share it to your personal news feed so that we can get this information out to a larger audience. That's right, Brittany, stand by. We'll bring you back later in the show. And if you get any questions from our audience, make sure you chime in with those. So we've been doing everything online since so March. We've got a few students who are going to be on our campuses soon, fulfilling their lab courses. But while we're doing things online, that's what we're talking about today. Online transfer affairs and online other events, including open houses. Vanessa Grover, the Program Director of Outreach and Recruitment, Office of Enrollment Management and Success, joins us this morning. Good morning, Vanessa. Good morning, Todd and team. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. And we've also got Jasmine Brown, who's one of our recruiters here at Houston Community College. Good morning, Jasmine. Good morning, Todd. How are you all today? I'm happy to be here. We are great. It's good to have you both here. We want to talk more about those virtual open houses. We'll have that coming up. So stand by both of you. But first, virtual transfer fairs. You know, each year, or I should say every semester, we have a number of colleges that visit our campuses. They set up across the district at various campuses, and they could be from anywhere from Texas Tech, Texas A&M, UT, U of H, and many more. They're recruiting our students. Well, that's still happening, even though we're online. And Zach Schrader joins us right now, and he's the uh, HCC Instructional Qu and Quality, or I should say, Instructional Quality Department. Good morning, Zach. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Todd. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for having me this morning. Well, thank you for being here. Now, I've been to some of the transfer fairs when they were done in person. You had tables set up, and uh, the one I think I remember the most is the one y'all would have out in Stafford because they were a table set up. It would be like in the commons area of the Stafford campus and the learning hub. But now that's unable to happen. So you guys have moved everything online. Yeah, so we decided basically with all the uh, with all the uh, closures that were that kind of came upon uh, beginning in March, uh, we decided to move all the fair locations virtually. So in the past, uh, we have one in the fall and one in the spring, and usually those take place on campus at about uh, six or seven HCC campus locations. But uh, beginning this year, we said we're we're going to have to do something different this year. So that's when we decided to move them all virtually and uh, still host them. Uh, uh, from October 5th through the 16th, which is the two-week uh, TACRO window that TACRO has given us for the fairs in the fall, uh, but they are all virtual. We have, uh, now we have nearly 50 universities that are participating in the in the fairs, and uh, students have the ability to uh, visit just about, uh, visit for an hour for about every school that they're uh, interested in transferring to. Now, Zach, answer this question for me. If someone's wanting to transfer in the spring, and they haven't done any of the legwork yet, but they're thinking, I may want to transfer. Can they get everything done by meeting with the reps at the at this fair, or is this more of an information gathering session? It's mainly an information gathering session, but uh, the way that in the past, the way that a lot of the institutions have brought uh, various uh, departments with them, various resources as well. So it is not unusual for the student to begin to uh, admit them or not necessarily admit themselves but begin the process of admitting themselves uh, or transferring into the institution so that's that's not unheard of that's that's something that that has happened before 
but ultimately it's a it's an information gathering uh, kind of session. The students are there to meet one on one with the with the institution. They physically have someone there from the institution. This time it'll be they'll they'll virtually have someone there directly from the institution who can answer their their questions that they have specifically uh, in regard to transfer into uh, for specific majors and and so on. But uh, it's not unheard of for the student to begin the uh, the transfer process when they do meet with these institutions. And the I'm looking through the list that you guys have here. I'm going to run through it. A Baylor, HBU, Prairie View and a and Texas A&M, Stephen F. Austin, SMU, Texas State, Texas Tech, U of H, all branches, uh, UT, same thing, all branches, and University of St. Thomas. And that's a, a number of them. That's a pretty large list. It did. The list really, uh, at first, uh, we were a little, a little nervous at first when we decided to move it virtually because I just wanted to kind of see how everyone would get the word out and the universities, you know, how eager would they be to participate in this. I know a number of them already started offering uh, information sessions during the summer and that's carried over to the fall. Uh, but with a with about a couple months out, it just kind of ballooned. All of a sudden we had a uh, dozens of universities coming in, uh, their representatives contacting us and, and saying, you know, how can we get on board? Uh, you know, what's your time uh, schedule? Where, when can I, uh, when can I present? Uh, you know, how do we, how do we make sure that we, that we get out there, get on the schedule so students can see us and, and be there to, uh, to visit with us uh, during the, uh, during the window that we're offering. So speaking of the windows, when are these happening and how do students get on board? Do you have to sign up ahead of time? Can you just log in? Are you using Zoom, WebEx? How does it work? Well, what we're doing is it's, it's going to begin on October 5th and it's going to run through the 16th. Uh, and each day we're offering about uh, five time slots starting at uh, 10 o'clock in the morning and concluding at uh, three o'clock in the afternoon, uh, usually Monday through Friday for those two weeks. Uh, and we have a main uh, schedule page uh, that's through the, uh, uh, camp, uh, through the HCC campaigns page uh, on, the, on our website. Uh, where students can uh, basically click the link, see the entire schedule for the two-week event, uh, see exactly when their specific university is, is going to be there, going to be offering the information session, specific day and time that they know when to uh, log in. And really, it's, it's as easy as clicking the, uh, the Zoom link uh, that's there right next to the school, and the student is able to uh, basically go in and, uh, and access the session once it begins. So there's uh, some schools do have a prior kind of uh, RSVP page or information page that they have students uh, fill out prior to the event. Uh, but for the most part, uh, the day of the event that it, that it occurs, the time, as long as the student's there and, uh, and has the ability to, they can, uh, they can click on the Zoom link and, and join the session. Is there a limit for the session and can any student attend? And here's a question. A lot of students are living at home with their parents during this pandemic and they may be exploring the options. Are the parents welcome to log in and can they do so separately? Uh, well, this is specifically for, for students. Uh, parents are, uh, they can always tag along. I don't think anyone is going to, you know, say, well, you know, if, if mom or dad would, would like to be on the, uh, you know, watch the session with the student, um, you know, there's going to be no issues with that. It is, but it is open for all HCC students. Uh, the, the feed, as far as I'm, as far as I know, there's no limit as far as attendees for each session. Um, at least, at, at least at this point, I, I haven't been made aware of that. Uh, but, but it is open to all HCC, HCC students and, and really anyone who clicks the link, uh, they can, they can have the whole family watching it with the students. So it's, you know, it's, it's not specifically just saying that the student has to, has to uh, uh, watch the uh, watch the session uh, themselves. Uh, you know, with the support that students have with their family and friends, you know, they're they're welcome to tag along and and also uh, get the information that they're looking for as well. And the students are allowed to answer que ask questions during these uh, live events when the uh, uh, universities are presenting. Is there a Q and A session? Yes, yes. Typically, they're going to uh, they're an hour long sessions. Uh, there's usually going to be about a uh, I'd say about a, probably a 15 to 20 minute introduction of the uh, of the institution itself. Probably usually they'll go over the majors with them, uh, you know, majors of areas of interest that students will have, uh, admissions process for transfer students, and then uh, each one will have a uh, Q and A session as far as uh, students can uh, ask questions, you know, raise their hand, uh, you know, uh, whether they uh, type them into a uh, to a, a like a meeting box or not a meeting box, but a uh, a text box, or uh, if they can 
you know, directly have the time to be called upon and, and ask the questions, uh, there, that will be available during these sessions. And real quickly, uh, Zach, what are the best benefits for attending one of these transfer fairs? I think it's great. You know, at HCC, we're, we're bringing, uh, as I mentioned, we have nearly 50 universities that are, that are coming to the students here. Uh, we're bringing them all together. Uh, and this is, this is really for the students to, uh, to really have it in their, in their home, so to speak. I mean, they'll be, they'll be virtually here visiting with, with uh, any institution if they wish to. Uh, the university is there, uh, the university is there for them to answer their questions. Um, so I think it's a, it's a huge opportunity to take advantage of, uh, unfortunately it's not going to be, you know, in person this time or, you know, on an actual campus, but it's still there. Um, these students can still make these contacts that they have uh, with these individuals at these universities, uh, and really kind of build upon that communication and, uh, make sure they're following the correct steps to, uh, to transfer successfully. So it's, it's, it's a great opportunity. It's huge. And I'm, I'm really proud of uh, what we've been able to pull together. Zach Schrader, we appreciate you being here and telling us about the virtual transfer affairs. Good luck with them. For more information on this, folks, you can go to hccs.edu slash transfer fair. We'll have that information in the social media post for the show. Zach, thanks for being here. All right. Thank you very much. I enjoyed it. All right. We're going to move on to Vanessa and Jasmine. And we're now talking about uh, now, Vanessa, first off, we just had you on the Bring Them Back campaign, um, right. which was a huge success. Any inside information on whether you guys are going to do that again in the spring? Um, so, Todd, we're definitely considering um, a spring version of Bring Them Back. Um, but if not spring, I can definitely see us doing this kickoff again or kicking off something similar in the fall um, for 2021. Now, one thing you have underway, which is going to be huge because they always are in person, but virtual open houses. We had a yeah. virtual transfer fairs. We're having to do them online and we want to continue bringing students in HCC, but letting them know what they need to know. And I guess one way of doing it is through a virtual open house. Yes, very correct, Todd. Um, so we're kicking off our spring um, 2021 open houses um, in October. October 7th is when we're having our first, first virtual open houses to prepare uh, students, parents, and community members for spring 2021. And what can people expect to see in the virtual open house? Right. Um, so one thing I want to highlight here is uh, the virtual ho houses are led um, by our student recruiters, right? They are the gatekeepers to come into, we call them gatekeepers bridges to welcome folks into HCC. So it will be led by them. So just want to call that out. Um, what folks can expect, they can expect to learn about how to enter HCC, what are the requirements, how to enter HCC virtually, right? How to submit your documents, any questions they may have to learn about many different pathways to enter HCC. HCC serves um, can serve everyone, right? So whatever you desire, we have that program and we have that pathway for you as well. Jasmine, I want to bring you into the conversation. Um, you are going to be uh, uh, on talking about the onboarding process for HCC. And I imagine onboarding could be uh, confusing if you don't know what to do. And that's kind of what you're here to help students or potential students with. Yes, so our role is very important as recruiters. Um, we are the first contact that most high school students do interact with. And they, like you say, they are very unaware of the process. Um, they are unaware of what to expect and what they're getting themselves into. So we do nurture them a lot, help them with the enrollment process, filling out their financial aid, making sure they have all of their documentation submitted so they can get to advising and enrollment. And what type of onboarding, you mentioned just a few of them, but let's take me through the steps and what type of onboarding support you're going to give to some of these students who really haven't been to a college. Many of them are high school students and they, they need to know this information to, to get signed up for classes. So the very first thing we'll do is have them submit their application to um, applytexas.org. And then from there, we'll encourage them to fill out their financial aid so that classes can be paid for. <laughs> and then we'll also make sure they have their meningitis shot records um, and vaccination shots. Um, and then from there, I'll walk through the student account, log into their checklist, make sure there's about 13 items on their checklist that they have to complete before they can even search for classes to enroll in. And one of those things is also a career assessment. Um, we do have 
where they can explore the program options. Um, October 1st is when financial aid is officially open for 2021-2022. So come October 1st, we will start application drives virtually, of course. Um, make sure they have their parents' 2019 tax information. That's going to be very important for financial aid this year. Um, we do have scholarships through um, HCC Foundation that they can also fill out. Um, the next thing is testing. So we'll have to make sure they enroll or get scheduled with our testing department for the TSI if they need it. If they've already taken the SAT or ACT, they'll submit those test scores. Um, from there, we will request their um, high school transcripts and then they will be ready for a new student orientation. And once they receive new student orientation, they can speak with our advising department. And then once they get advised, they are able to enroll and start classes. So it is a process um, getting them to the enrollment piece, but we are there to assist them throughout the entire way. And Jasmine and Vanessa, I'm gonna ask you this question um, and maybe both of you can jump in on it. Across the nation, we've seen a situation, especially towards the end of the summer, where many students were going back to college campuses. I'm thinking of a situation at University of North Carolina, uh, Chapel Hill, where they went off to college. They were there for a few days, maybe a week. The COVID cases went up. They sent everybody home. So these people had, had moved into a college, brought all their college furniture for their kids. Then they had to bring them back home. Then they're thinking they're going to take some online classes. Then they bring them back. And in some cases, they're taking them back home again. Are you finding by talking to high school, not just high school students, but their parents, that they're feeling more safe now with keeping their kids close to home? Because I know if I had a high schooler, I'd be thinking twice about sending my kid across state to a college where I may have to go pick them up in a couple of weeks and pay a bunch of money for them to do online learning when we can enroll them at HCC. Are you seeing that situation at all? Right, right. Thanks for highlighting that real situation that folks are experiencing, many folks are experiencing across um, the states, um, especially across Texas, right? And so, um, yes, we are engaging with family members um, and students who did, you know, set to go elsewhere, um, but then had to return home because of this real pandemic. Um, and we want them to know that we're here for them. The classes that we offer can definitely prepare them to transfer to those four-year uh, universities or transfer, uh, you know, the year after they complete, if they continue to desire. So, um, and also we still have that fun engagement um, freshman piece, right? Because students not only go away to college, they go away to college for many different reasons, but also to enjoy that on-campus fun um, life, right? Our life is very engaging. And so even though it's virtually, they still get to uh, experience um, what it means to be a college student um, in this new era. And so HCC do offer many over 200 plus programs um, with several pathways um, and also that other piece, which is that fun engagement piece. So we do have everything. We mirror what a, a, on, on campus will look like without the dorms. Well, you know, and you bring up a good point because our classes are transferable to major universities mm -hmm. and that's handled when you put together your de degree plan and then right. you bring in like Zach and his team and they're bringing the recruiters to the campuses in the long run. Zach, I imagine, you know, in the long run, this situation has got to affect your transfer affairs because many people may not be thinking about going away to college this semester or next, but they're looking maybe a year from now. Right. That's true. That's, that's definitely true, and, and we are we are interested to see how that's all going to lay out, uh, especially with, uh, you know, as, as far as HEC students completing their degrees and then what their next step is going to be, uh, when they're actually going to to really get serious about the transfer, that's going to be one of the things that's, that's, that's going to be really interesting to see coming forward. Mm -hmm. And if Jessica, I can add here, Todd, I would say also, yeah, HCC classes are affordable, right? You're taking yes. them online anyway, right? So take them online at home yeah. with your mom free meals, right? Enjoy that. Um, it's very affordable. Um, you get to still hang out with your family and friends at home. And so make this year count at HCC. And Jasmine, have you noticed anything in, in talking with students and parents as a recruiter um, about some, uh, you know, anticipation of what may be happening in the next se several months? Even though um, some things are opening up, we're still living in a time of COVID where things are uncertain. Um, yes, actually, I have. Um, quite recently, I had a student ask, she was attempting to, or she was set to 
take her classes on campus, um, I believe after October, whenever we were supposed to go on campus, but she decided she wants to stay home. So we do have a lot of concerns with um, returning on campus and having the online option is really awesome because if they are concerned about being on campus, we do have that piece where they can still learn in the, in the comfort of their home. So I have experienced where, yes, they are like changing their mind in the middle of the process, but we do have the option set up to where they are able to um, still continue online. Vanessa, we're going to have the post in the show of the link to uh, your uh, online um, uh, uh, your online open houses that you're having. But where can people go if they want more information? Right. Um, go to hcc.edu slash information session. Um, and right there, you'll have everything you need to learn about what is it that you can gain from our inform virtual information uh, open houses. And also, you can register. So the first one kicks off October 7th. At 3.30, we have uh, several open houses over the course of this um, October, I should say. So please find one and sign up, encourage your parents, um, community members, anyone who's interested to learn about their options here at HCC. Um, our virtual open houses is where you would like to connect with us. Vanessa Grover, Jasmine Brown, and Zach Schrader, thank you all for joining us and talking about the online offerings we're offering virtually to our students. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're going to move on to our HCC news and events. Of course, going out to our Stafford campus, Raquel Sims, a lot going on out in Stafford. Good morning, Raquel. Good morning. Um, there is a lot going out here in Stafford, and I'm just excited to just share with you all just wonderful partnerships that have been taking place. Um, Walmart and SMSD partnered together to provide school supplies and all sorts of goodies for the district. So we're excited about that because um, even though we're in the time of, you know, just COVID-19, some parents may not have their job. And so it's great for, you know, Walmart to kind of step in and provide those necessities for students. And so we're excited about that. Um, I also had a chance to speak with a biology professor at HCC, and he was just pretty much talking about how he was bringing his classes, um, like his hands-on activities, to 3D. And so there's this app that they're using with um, really just diving into anatomy and physiology and showing the students how things can be done virtually, but at the same time get that introspective per like and get that perspective of like the inside of the body and so on and so forth so that was pretty cool to see that and then also Stafford has a COVID testing site and I just wanted to kind of share the information of where individuals can go for that testing site so the address is 31 one zero fifth street stafford texas 77477 and the phone number for that because it's um only it requires appointments um is 281-499-2616 again the number is 281-499-2616 2616 and um, according to the um, Fort Bend County website, the hours are between eight and five from Monday through Friday and 10 to two through Saturday. So um, if you haven't got a COVID test and you feel like you need to get one, please, I encourage you to go out there. And um, for next week, we're excited to talk about the Fort Bend Habitat for Humanity. They're having a virtual event, well, a virtual run where they're raising funds, which is called like Raise the Roof. So we're excited about that. Um, so I can't wait to share with y'all next week and if you aren't doing so already please follow us on our facebook page which is hcc stafford tv studio as well as like us on youtube to keep up with our latest features on hcc stafford tv studio and also on twitter at hcc sw tv stafford thank you so much todd for having me Thanks, Raquel, for the update on things going on out in Stafford. Of course, links to the events she was talking about will be placed in the social media uh, post for this show later on. Peter Frampton, the poodle, making an appearance. I don't know what the deal is, Brittany. He wanted to be on the show today. Peter all Frampton always wants to be yeah. on the show. What are you talking he about? Just, he looks like he's in heaven. <laughs> he always wants to be on the show. So, uh, yeah, yeah, he's, I don't know. He's, Today is a little bit different. Anyway, uh, Brittany, we got a filmmaking learning learning series going on. HCC's Visual and Performing Arts Center of Excellence has launched a series of free virtual workshops. That's right. Budding filmmakers can attend these, Brittany. They certainly can, Todd. So this is happening this Wednesday, September 30th 
from noon to 2 p.m. So Brad Rushing will discuss his experiences in LA and Texas. So if you're, as Todd put it, a budding filmmaker, you can attend this filmmaker filmmaking learning series with Brad Rushing, who is a cinematographer. Registration is required. You can email michael.cohn, C-O-H-N, at hccs.edu. Yeah, so you remember, Brittany, last week we spoke with Jordan Carswell about the Homeworld Project Homeworld session. Well, they are in the news this week, and they're here to inspire and engage participation in Project Homeworld. The Ideas Academy will host a series of virtual talks. We highlighted that last week, and that actually starts Tuesday, October the 6th, next week, 2 to 2.45 p.m. Uh, you can visit hccs.edu slash homeworld for more information. And uh, Raquel, maybe you can cover this next one. We're all in for HCC. It's a faculty and staff campaign that's going on right now, which is raising money for scholarships with the uh, foundation. Yes, yes. So HCC students need our support. You know, as as we like I mentioned with the staffer and everything. You know, this is a great time for everyone to step in and help each other out because of the unprecedented time. So, um, support our um, our fin fi support students need our support financially to graduate. So faculty and staff, please sign up for payroll deduct today to make an impact all year long. It's ongoing through November six, so you have some time, but don't let the time pass you by. Now, don't forget and um, for you. Can can go to donate at hccs.edu slash all in for HCC. Again, the link is donate at hccs.edu slash all in for HCC. And of course, what would it not be if we did not have a hashtag? So the hashtag is all in for HCC. That's right, Raquel. And student life, they keep busy during this whole shutdown. They have mm -hmm. not stopped. They've got all types of events online. They've got one coming up uh, tomorrow at 1 p.m. It's called Who's on the Ballot? If you don't know, you need to know. Uh, join Student Life in gov the government department for a discussion on the 2020 presidential campaign. So students, tune in at 1 p.m. tomorrow, Tuesday, September 29th. And it looks like they have another event coming up on Saturday, Brittany. They certainly do, Todd. So this is the Susan G. Komen Virtual Race for the Cure. Obviously, we're going to be practicing social distancing. So this is a great opportunity for HCC students to show their support by putting on their walking shoes and walking one mile in your neighborhood, a local park, or a walking trail. The first 100 students to register get their own HCC exclusive Team Tough Cookie shirt to wear the day of the virtual walk. I love it. I, I love that idea. The Team Tough Cookie. That's right, because it takes a, a while well, for me to walk one mile because I'm not a runner like Todd over here is. <laughs> so for students who are interested, uh, you can go to the website hccs.edu slash student life, or you can email the student life at hcc.studentlife at hccs.edu. The best way to register is to check your emails for the links. So students, be sure you're checking your HCC emails for from uh, student life, but also just in general, you need to because that's where we're gonna send all of our communications from the college. That's right, students, if you have questions, we have answers. You can go to a virtual online toolkit. It's very easy to get to, you can get information everything from technology to textbooks to tutoring and so much more log on to hccs.edu slash online hyphen toolkit uh hispanic heritage month is underway and raquel salsa dancing classes are happening next week Yes, I'm extremely excited because I love salsa dancing. You know, I see Brittany over there shaking and everything. I love it. <laughs> yes, so salsa salsa dance classes are next week between 7 and 8 p.m. on Tuesday, October 6th. So get your salsa dancing shoes together because we're about to get in. And so free lessons are in our living Zoom, our living room, sorry, living room via Zoom. <laughs> and um, yes, and so, um, yeah. I'm excited about that. I love We're it. We're all excited about salsa classes. And Coco, the movie, is going to be at a virtual drive-in. Largan's it's uh, next week as well. We'll have the information in the post for the show. Brittany, we're running out of time. Real quickly, we've got some guests on the show tomorrow. We do. So Tuesday, we will address the issue of homelessness in Fort Bend uh, with the Fort Bend Habitat for Humanity, which is hosting a virtual fun run, Raise the Roof, uh, throughout October 
uh, while Fort Bend Family Promise discusses its shelters for entire families, not just women and children. And finally, we will meet with HCC owns Bianca Matlock of Financial Aid, who will talk about thousands of dollars we have distributed from the help after Harvey Grant. So tune in tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. for Up to the Minute live on Facebook. 